Hi, this is Mike Fauché. Today I'd like to do a quick video on the Silverstone Dual SSD USB 3.1 enclosure. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit that notifications icon so you'll be notified on future videos. Okay, I'd like to walk you through kind of the basic assembly of this thing. It's kind of really straightforward, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But I've already taken the four screws off the lid and as you can see, these trays actually fit right inside of here. So, and the drives themselves just snap into this little carrier. So it's very simple to get the drive in. There's no tools required for at least getting the drive in. You do obviously need some tools to get the, the piece out. So from here, we just slide them in and push them in. Slide them in to the tray, lock it down, and now you're ready to put the four screws back on here. Okay, and that's pretty much all it takes to go ahead and install it. Now, there's one thing I would like to draw your attention to, and something that is a little bit annoying to me, but in the back of this thing is a fan. Um, and I find the fan to be a little bit too loud for my taste. And you know, the since this will handle laptop hard drives as well as SSDs, um, the fan becomes you know somewhat important if you're putting hard drives in, but next to useless if you're actually putting SSDs in. So what I did to make this quiet, versatile storage is I actually disabled the fan. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And again, do this at your own risk. This is something that I just did on mine. I'm not recommending you do it on yours, but if you're experiencing a noise problem and you're running solid state drives, it's something to consider. Uh, but again, this is it, something you want to do at your own risk, understanding what you're going to avoid the warranty. So let me go ahead and take this apart and show you how that, how easy that is. Switch over to the Phillips bit here. And let's go ahead and take this apart. You know, one of the things I probably should have mentioned uh, earlier, but I was kind of trying to do this and see, you know, out of sequence a little bit, is that this, the drives in the front plate actually have to be removed before you can get to the back. But again, I encourage you to actually put it together and try it, run it for a while, even before attempting to do this slight modification, even though it's not a big mod. So let's pop these drives in. So part of the requirement for taking this out is you got to pull these two rubber pads off the front of the unit and remove these two screws. And what that does is actually loosen up this piece in here. And then you're going to also need to remove the ones in the back because that also holds part of the assembly in. So let's take this apart real quick. Put that there. And put that there. And then what you're going to see is this whole assembly just slides out. And what you can, as you can see here, let me zoom in on that a little bit. As you can see right here, I've actually pulled out the fan header. So there's a fan header right there and I've just actually just popped that guy out. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not very difficult. You just have to be careful. Do this at your own risk and see if you, you know, the, how important or how loud that fan is for you. For me, I found it to be not acceptable for what I was doing. Um, so I chose to remove it. And let's go ahead and put this back in here. It looks more difficult than it really is, but it's pretty straightforward if you know where, which screws to actually remove. And there we have it. And we'll put that last screw in. So once we've put all the four screws back in, 
we can re pop these little rubber feet back in they're just stickers and they go together pretty well and there we have it okay now what we can do is put the four screws back in to the back Okay, so now we've got the back of the case back on. So we've got the enclosure ready to reassemble the drives. So let's go ahead and do that. There we have it. And now let's put the front back on. And there you have it. So we're now ready to get this thing going and see how it performs. Okay, now that we've got it assembled, let's see how this thing actually performs. The first test I wanna do is a straight ATTO test. Um, if you recall the back of the unit, and I'll show you here quickly, the unit can be configured into one of several different configurations, including independent disks, RAID 0, RAID 1, or just a giant um, storage disk. So what I'm going to show you here is just a RAID 0 and RAID 1. We'll start with RAID 0 because that's how the drive is configured now. And let's see how it performs under a RAID 0, which is a stripe configuration. This will give you this will give you the additive storage of both drives, but will give you increased performance. So let's go ahead and start the benchmarking. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit, and then I'm going to st st step forward to the end of the test. It'll give you an idea how, of how this thing performs in a Stripe configuration. Okay, and we're done. As you can see, this thing has uh, quite a bit of read performance. The write performance is adequate, but it certainly excels at read, which is typical of a RAID 0, especially with a, you know, um, what I'll call a lower end controller. Obviously, they don't put, you know, the best RAID controllers in these boxes, but they work well and they're reliable. However, they're not going to give you the share performance that you would off of a dedicated controller but for portable storage this is pretty awesome because you can see there's just spikes of almost 980 uh, megabytes per second you know um, of read performance um, which is nothing to sneeze at this is certainly faster than most external enclosures so um, let's move on to the next phase of the test which is to read and write um, larger files to and from the system, which is probably more typical of how these will be used. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab a 24 gigabyte movie and move it from a um, high-speed NVMe drive on my system to the new external RAID drive that we just created. So let's go ahead and do that and let's see how it performs. So as you can see, the write performance is pretty strong. Uh, pretty much matches what we saw on the benchmark with a nice consistent performance all the way through. So now we're going to 
re, uh, uh, reverse that test and actually copy it from the enclosure to um, a, another folder on my system. Okay, so let's see how that world works out. So let's copy this over to this. And as you can see, we're getting some extremely fast copying here. Uh, this again rivals the benchmark. Um, and it's given us a nice throughput all the way through. This thing will copy the file in no time. This is extremely fast for a small USB device. Um, you know, if you attach this to a laptop, you would, uh, you know, be getting some decent performance. Now, as you can see, there's a buffering, um, a little bit of buffering taking place, so it did slow down to 300, which is still really fast for USB. But um, with smaller files or with something less than 25 gig, it would have just flew through that with no problem. So overall, the, the performance is really good for both reading and writing. Um, and it's really hard when you're looking at a write test to see if it's actually buffering on the system or from the USB. All we saw was that it was actually buffering. But in my view and from my experience with all this, it, you know, this is pretty decent performance. Okay, so uh, the next part of this is we're going to reconfigure the device and go to a RAID 1 configuration, which is mirroring. And mirroring's got a whole different performance characteristic because um, obviously you're writing the same data to both drives at the same time, so the performance is going to be significantly different. Plus you get an overhead for, uh, no overhead penalty for having those, uh, uh, you know, for having that RAID controller writing to both drives simultaneously. So let's see what happens when we uh, give that a shot. Okay, as with any new drive, when you reconfigure the RAID configuration, you actually have to re initialize the drive and, and format it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll create a new simple for, uh, volume. We'll just leave all the defaults for now. Okay, so now we're, what we're seeing here is a freshly formatted, um, it's half the size because we're running in RAID, RAID 1, which is a, a, a redundancy. So let's see how that performs. You're going to see a significant difference in performance. So let's go ahead and copy. And let's paste that into the new drive. So automatically, right away, you're seeing just a huge, huge difference in performance. And that's because the RAID controller is writing the same data to two drives at the same time. So overall, you're going to see a, a significant decrease in performance. But, you know, in terms of USB drives, it's probably on par with the average flash drive. Um, but you're getting the redundancy of having dual drives. So we'll let this go through here. We'll come back in a few minutes and see how it held up. And then we'll go into uh, read performance. As you can see, the performance is just wildly different than using the RAID 0 configuration. Um, it takes quite a bit of time to copy a file this size. Um, so, it, but again, you know, you have to keep it in perspective. If, if you've got a couple of large, you know, terabyte SSDs into this unit and you want the redundancy because you want the, you know, the protection and the backup because it's your schoolwork, then, you know, it's worth having. It's a nice, small, lightweight device that you can kind of shove anywhere and attach to your laptop or, or your desktop. 
So you do have to keep it in perspective. You will pay a penalty when you go to the redundancy. You will get huge performance gains if you go to a RAID 0 and take advantage of the dual drives for video editing or scratch drives or photos or anything you're going to do with it. So again, it's a um, you know personal choice of how you configure it, but this is the results. We'll do one last test, and that's actually the read test. We'll, we'll read back into a different folder, and we'll see that it's obviously much faster than this. Reading from a RAID uh, mirror is much faster than writing to a mirror. So let's see what happens. So we're going to copy this over into this folder and see what this looks like. So right away you're seeing a performance increase and you're going to find that you know reading from the drive is significantly different when you're reading from a mirror configuration and writing to it. Writing to a mirror configuration is extremely slow on any system but this is obviously even slower because it's a USB and it's a lower end RAID controller. But anytime you're mirroring a, you know, a couple of devices you will take a performance hit because the controller basically has to do all the work. You can see the vast difference, you know, it's in the order of, you know, roughly 10 times faster reading than it is writing. So it's definitely different. So anyway, that's the um, difference between the two configurations. And there you have it. I'd like to leave you with a couple of thoughts on this device. First off, this is designed to be self-powered. So it's going to power off the USB bus. However, depending on the kind of drives that you put in, and of course the computer and how much power your, your USB is putting out, you may have to use a 12 volt supply if you're using some hard drives, some spinning drives. Um, I haven't run across any uh, issues with USB too much. Um, I think there was one laptop where I couldn't get it to power. But most of the time, I've went on, on the different devices I've tried it, it's worked fine. And it hasn't been an issue, even with dual SSDs. But it's something that you need to be aware of. Um, this is a really kind of niche device. And depending on what you're doing, what your needs are, uh, this may not be right for you. Um, I found it to be useful when paired up with a mobile workstation, like a laptop. Um, when you need to offload storage or have extra storage to work with, I used it in the RAID 0 configuration and found it to be useful. But again, you'll have to decide what your needs are and what configuration you want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and click that notification bell so you'll be notified on future releases. Have a great day.